Well, hello, my YouTube friend. <laughs> Sorry if I'm laughing at the start, but this video uh, is a stretch in itself. Hopefully, <laughs> can be very interesting or a dramatic video. We'll see about that. Uh, I want, uh, in this video, to present you that knife that I just uh, uh, got from uh, Daryl Roth and tell you how I got to this knife. Then, after that, uh, give you a kind of storytelling about how a collector evolve, uh, uh, how I got this piece and, and, and others, and discuss, yeah, about how to collect and, and uh, how to collect knives and the way that the collection can uh, evolve. Why did I choose to do that with that video? Uh, uh, probably because <laughs> when you look at this knife and you check my recent video, you would ask yourself uh, what uh, the heck is going wrong. <laughs> With TV, it doesn't look like his uh, uh, usual uh, uh, knives. Uh, and you would be right, you would be right. So, first of all, let's discuss about this knife. And first of all, I, I, I also want to give a huge thank to Daryl Ruff, uh, because this knife came as a replacement, actually. I made a trade. It looks like years ago, almost, you know. Uh, you know, a year can be a lot of time <laughs> in knife collecting. And maybe that's what we're going to discuss also about uh, later, uh, if we have some time in this video. So, I had a zero tolerance, triple eight, that I uh, uh, involved in a trade with a DDR, actually. You do a big, expandable knife. I thought it was a fair trade because uh, uh, the DDR was a custom, and I really wanted to try DDR. was not willing maybe to 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 make some money just to for the experience but since i wanted to part with my zero tolerance i thought it was a nice trade but when i got the knife it was oh man an old one the damascus was messy and everything i couldn't do i mean to me if the knife is not pristine i can't oh man it's impossible to keep it so I, and, and, and I was not even willing to, <laughs> to sell it because, as I said, uh, if I expect a knife to be pristine when I receive it, I expect it to be pristine when I send it. So when I will sell a knife, you can be sure that it's going to be pristine for sure. So I contacted Daryl and I said, oh, man, uh, this knife needs a lot of spa, a lot of things to do on this one. I'm not really interested in this knife. What can you do? And the guy was gentle, uh, uh, a real gentleman, uh, uh, to just offer me to simply replace it with his new uh, knife and he will <laughs> keep, I don't know, uh, in his uh, historic uh, pieces, uh, the, 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 the custom one, the old one. So that's what he did. I mean, it took some time, but eventually uh, he replaced that knife. But you know, this story happened like, oh man, uh, some, 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 some months ago, you know, and, and um, along the road, yeah, the collection uh, uh, evolved a lot, a lot, a lot. So we're gonna discuss about that. So first of all, the knife. The knife is an excellent knife, perfect EDC. Anyone would be happy with a knife like that. Let's do the video and the review uh, of it. We have here a level two uh, from their own rod. So this basically, they, they build their own knife in their, um, shop in Texas. So that's a purely US made product. Okay. Uh, you're going to have three level uh, of finish. The one, which is the mid tech, this one level two, which is, uh, we call that a high tech these days. So a lot of men involved in that and the level three, which is going to be the custom basically. So here we have what? A uh, full scale of titanium, okay, uh, very nice S35V uh, blade with a compound grind on this one. Uh, so, you know, when you you use their website, you, you got to have some, you can, you know, choose your option, take whatever you want on the handle and on the blade, choose a compound, and, and you know, the price will depend on the on the finish that you will, uh, that, that you will choose. So, here we have a very nice uh, piece of a titanium on both sides, and I absolutely adore the finish on this one. Let me try to focus on this one. So you have a very nice satin finish on the flat, and a very deep stone wash on the groove, and the groove are very nice. As you can see, they are chamfered. A lot of attention is put on this knife. Believe me, a lot of work is involved here. A lot, a lot. So very nice satin here. And look at the balance that you have here. The satin also on the flat, is also here a satin, sorry, on the flat, and the bevel, which is to contrast with the grooves, the bevel here are gonna, are gonna be, you know, with, with this, this deep and very, very nice stone wash, very nice stone wash. So, great handle, custom pivot here. Uh, look how the pattern is reproduced here. You have 
a, a, a sh short sorry, line, medium one, long one, and on the other side is the same. But here you have the clip that follows the long line and goes, you know, follow perfectly well the the, um, the groove here. That is well thought. Look at that. I mean, it's exactly the continuum of the uh, of the groove. Perfectly well thought. Perfectly well thought. Just a great, great overall uh, uh, finish and design here. Uh, very nice uh, um, grip. I mean, perfect grip. You have here the, 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 the choil here and the guard with the flipper tab, and here all the four fingers that are perfectly, uh, uh, you know, set on the handle. And the jimping is very, very functional. Great, great, great handling on this one. Um, it's a metal uh, uh, stainless, steel, st stainless steel, sorry, uh, backspacer. You have some jeweling inside. Look at that. I mean, a lot of attention. And, and, and as it should, because we are uh, in the realm of the $1,000 knife. So, you know, uh, it's a lot of money. So, uh, great handle, great blade. Look at this compound. Believe me, this is sharp as they can come. I mean, it cuts, it's razor sharp, and it's yet a consistent and quite thick blade uh, uh, on the spine here. I like the stone wash here. And and after the bump, you have the satin. Very, very nicely done. Very nice compound. As I said, overall, a great knife. Steel insert here. It's a rock solid knife. I adore the stop pins that are external. And yet, they're hidden. Very, very nice. Very nice touch. Because these, those are going to be the, the, the strongest stop pin you can imagine. And yet, you don't see them. So, the best of both worlds. Uh, no stickness whatsoever. Perfect detent, perfect centering, a great knife. Now, is it something that I can have in my collection? Yeah, I would say no, because I, would, I wouldn't have any, any need for that. And that's what I want to discuss. You know, uh, um, a collector can evolve really, really, really fast in his collection. I mean, uh, or, you know, take a, a regular pass and evolve a, a, along the years. Some guys that I know, they, I mean, in a matter of like six, seven months, they acquired such a humongous collection. It's just incredible. And others, they would take like years to, to get a collection and they will stay, you know, even uh, uh, with some production or meat takes. It will depend on a lot of things. First of all, uh, the means, of course. You know, we are talking about a lot of money here involved in, in, uh, in, uh, in knives. So, the means can make you, you know, collect only pieces like that, uh, production knives that are already, already uh, expensive because we're talking here about knife that, if I remember correctly, is over $200, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, some people, they will have the means only to collect that. Some other, they have the means to collect more, but they will be happy with that. Uh, some other, they won't have the means and they will involve uh, and they will, you know, spend a lot of their saving or whatever in collecting because that can be a disease also. Collecting can be, can be a true disease. Uh, I'm in a kind of in the middle. You know, I've been collecting knives for a lot of time, but being in France, I was only able, you know, to collect uh, production knives like those, you know, and I was happy with that, believe me, and also traditional knives. And it took me years and years to get into uh, uh, the custom knife world. Why? Because I was living in France. And the only way to get to some nice pieces was actually through uh, the social media. And I want to thank a lot uh, uh, YouTube and, and Instagram for that, because it helped me uh, to reach other people and to be part of this community, I would call it that, uh, um, even if I if I live in, in in France, because you know it can be you know if you want to trade a knife or something, you can be you know uh, it can be hazardous when you ship overseas and everything. But through uh, uh, this, I mean, social media, I, I was able to acquire more knife, and that happened in a matter of like two or three uh, three years. The last three years, I was able to acquire a lot, a lot, a lot of custom. So a lot of things happened uh, in, during this period of time. I know, and um, this when I was trading that knife, actually, I was in the kind of in the middle. You know, I had some customs, but I had also some mid takes and everything. So this at that time was a perfect, perfect uh, knife uh, for me. But now today, uh, I, I mean, you have two things. You have this, you know, those are art pieces. I mean, I wouldn't dare carrying a knife like that, okay? A knife like this one, a knife like this one, man, uh, I'll, I'll be so sorry to, to mess with those. Those are art pieces. So that's why I had some custom, but I also used uh, uh, 
those kind of knives, you know, uh, or the production knives. But but along the road, I found some customs that are absolutely perfect for EDC. This, I use the hell out of it. This one, I use the hell out of it. So eventually, I started even EDCing my customs. So they, along the road, there were no more room for me for kind of mid text uh, uh, and, and I'm sure that a lot of uh, people would, would, would have this, uh, this, this same uh, uh, experience. And as I say, the collection uh, uh, evolved and also the way to get knives evolved. The fact that I'm a little bit well known now <laughs> uh, makes it that I can approach also pieces that I wouldn't even imagine uh, being able to get. You know, there are some I, I, I've talked about the means. Of course, you need means to have uh, uh, knives as expensive as those. But that's not only it. I mean, you need to have also a lot of contact because even with your means, those pieces you don't find. And Frank is, oh man, as a lot of custom maker, they are absolutely overwhelmed with, with the demands and they won't be able, you know, uh, you would have to wait not even wait, I mean, <laughs> for years and years uh, uh, for to get a spot. But this, I mean, battle, mo the battle, sorry, money can buy. Some things you really need to have some contact and, and be lucky because this money cannot really buy. I mean, we are talking here about a piece that is unique. Uh, that's the only crooks made by Lee Williams with the crop circle in green. One off, that's it. So to get a piece like that, you have to get involved in the community and to know a lot of people and uh, and be known by by those so this also money cannot buy so you see there is a, a, a tremendous amount of different way of uh, collecting and of evolving in this community or not uh, mine has been this one you know kind of uh, 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 I don't know it's uh, I don't know if I can you know <laughs> label it or whatever but this is how it happened so along the road a knife like that has, to me, no more meaning, but I really wanted to present it because take like a year ago, and even now, even now I can relate to the perfection of this knife. Uh, we are talking here about a knife that has a lot of uh, custom touches. Uh, we are in the realm, and I wanted to discuss about that also because the prices get crazy for everything. But, you know, a production knife like this one, and some production now, they go even over $300, okay? Uh, then you have the mid-high takes like this one that will go in the realm of the 660. Okay, so we are talking here about a knife that is over $650, okay? Uh, simple titanium scale. A lot of, I, I'm gonna make a video about this one because I love this knife. But you see, it's a simple blade, simple, nothing crazy, and perfect EDC. You know, on this one, you can tell that there is a tremendous amount of work more than on the Rowdy, for example, either on the blade or on the, on the scale. Uh, uh, it's obvious. So we are talking here about a $1,000 knife. So, uh, or ma'am, even it's, I think it's 1100, something like that with this finish. Uh, so, who can buy that? I mean, some people can buy. I mean, you have some people that can buy only like those knives, you know. Uh, some people will buy more. So for some people, already, already a knife like that at $100, it's insane because they wouldn't spend more than 20, 30, 30 bucks uh, uh, on a knife. And I can understand that. And believe me, if my means were that, uh, and they were actually, because <laughs> my means when I started collecting knives, they were really low uh, uh, and I could have only, you know, uh, cheap knives. But I was lucky. I was happy with that. When I was a kid, I loved using my knives. So I could be happy all my life with that, you know. So depending on your means, you can have, or, or your wheel, you can have these, or it can go up to, you know, like, uh, yeah, these knives, I would say, okay? Uh, but this knife is now a thousand dollars. So some people can afford it, some may not afford it. So for those of you who can uh, uh, afford it for one thousand, you will get a perfect knife. And as a matter of fact, if <laughs> if you are one of those, I'll be happy uh, to sell you that knife because this is what will gonna happen. I will have to sell it, uh, uh, but I cannot say only good things about this knife, which is absolute. To me, absolute perfection in that kind, in that level of, of 
you know, knives, which is no more the one that I'm craving, but truly believe me, that's a great knife. And again, before finishing, because we're heading to the 15 minutes, I want to thank Ian uh, Ralph uh, and Daryl Ralph because they are been awesome.